the battle apparently we'll have to you know fight to the very you know last breath of our life and that's why we pray in the hail mary pray for us at the hour of our death you know we the the, the battle uh, goes on you know the, throughout the whole life but it, again there is a, 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 I think a grace that comes with persevering in what the Lord has taught us. Like I know, again, in my own life, um, having a habit of responding to temptation and, and again, all kinds of temptation. If I'm getting angry at something or if I'm worrying about something, again, I, I have those go-to responses. And, and so many times, oh my gosh, like just a simple calming down turning to the Lord, going through my little prayer routine, it just, I'm fine now. And yeah. I just think to myself, how many times in the past I would let being visited by something like this ruin my afternoon or, or, or get bug me for like the next even half hour when a simple, humble response in obedience to what the Lord has taught me can just dissipate it. And I, I guess one thing I heard the other day too, is someone was, was mentioning the nature of, of, of an emotion, because sometimes temptation comes as an emotion. The nature of emotion is kind of like a wave, you know, like it, it, it comes and then it goes. Mm -hmm. And just, and they say it's, it's a kind of a physiological, psychological reality. Like, you, 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 like an emotion isn't sustained for like eight hours. I mean, a, Emotions come and they go. But the thing is, using a surfing analogy, <laughs> if you catch the wave and start riding that wave of emotion, well, that, like, that then it will you'll stay with it. And and so um, so so I, I think the person who again develops uh, some kind of a discipline like this will notice that okay this is this my life is better now and and also like so many people go to psychologists and psychiatrists which is fine you know if you, if you have you know issues but I, I think so much of the anguish in our minds is because we don't know how to respond to the the, the battles that go on in our minds and I I guess like I said, I really believe that you know, the example of our Lord Jesus, we find in the sac sacred scripture and as taught by the tradition, I think it's the best way I, to me to do what Jesus did. Uh, I, I think it, it, it would help a lot of people with the things they're dealing with. Yeah, I think it's important clarification you made there that temptation isn't only of a sexual nature. I think it's easy to notice the sexual temptations because they're so intellectually visual, so to speak, whereas we don't realize anxiety is a temptation. Impatience is a temptation. Anger is a temptation. You know, despair, temptation, temptation. And when you start to realize, okay, you know, these, you know, are feelings that I have, but they're also a temptation to wallow in this thing. And there's so many other verses that you can use. Okay, I'm feeling, you know, upset or whatever. Okay, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. You know, and you could you could pick different verses of Scripture that apply to particular things that you struggle with because maybe you tend to be a more anxious type of person. Well. Find some verses of, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart and rely not upon your understanding. Make straight your way. You know, just find verses that that apply to the struggles in your area. And then you can pull out a whole different arsenal of scripture verses, not just the ones that talk about purity of heart, but of peace of mind, of faith in God, of trust in him. And before you know it, you really start to put together, you know, a vast weaponry, so to speak, to keep these temptations at bay instead of getting sucked into these emotions. Because like the spiritual, you know, masters always tell us, you never want to make a major decision during a time or a moment of desolation. And oftentimes mm -hmm. when we're feeling these desolate emotions, that's when we make just stupid choices because you're like, oh, I'm so down. I'm going to go ahead and cope with it by doing this. You know, what you need at those times of desolation is stillness in a sense of, OK, I'm not jumping to any conclusions or rash actions. I just need to, like, keep my peace, use my verse and move on. And this emotion will pass. Yeah, exactly. And that's like when you when you ask me like what we'd like to talk about with regard to purity, like that's that's the first thing that came to mind, just because, again, in my own life. It, it's become a beautiful thing. Like it's something I like to talk about and I like to share about. And, um, and like I said, it, it, there was, there was kind of that turning point, you know, years ago when I realized, and it wasn't just, I realized like I really felt the Lord 
taught me this, or he he showed me this in scripture, and and again through the teaching of the saints that, you know, if you imitate, it's like the Lord Jesus was saying, if you imitate me, how I battle temptation, and if you make the Word of God important, like make a home for the Word of God in your life, uh, it, your experience with being visited by temptation will be different, you know, and, and I can testify to that. I mean, not to say that I handle every temptation, you know, perfectly. I mean, it's again, it's the work of a lifetime. Um, but uh, like I said, for, for me, it was just a beautiful discovery and it's something I like to share. So thank, thanks for the opportunity to um, give me to, to, to be able to share this little joy, this, this grace in my life. No, this is, a, this is a great nuggets today. And if someone is maybe overwhelmed with, okay, where do I find the verses? I'm sure if you just got on Google and you typed in like Bible verses for anxiety, Bible verses for this, Bible verses that, pick what it is that you struggle with, Google it, come up with some go-to verses, put them in your pocket, type them on your cell phone, just start memorizing them. And before you know it, it'll become like your breath. I mean, you look at some of the, you know, some of the Eastern saints. I mean, they would literally breathe prayers all day long. I mean, they would live in prayer. I mean, St. Paul's, I tell him, pray without ceasing. And that I don't think that that's a exaggeration. I think that's where God wants to call us to, to that level of sanctity and perfection of praying without ceasing. And we realize that temptations aren't things dragging us out of prayer, like you said at the top. Well, I mean, what a perfect reminder to enter into prayer. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that little clip. But if you want to see the whole episode where this came from, just click the link here. And in the meantime, we want to invite you to help us share this message. And there's a couple things you can do real quick. Number one, if you like or comment or share this video, YouTube will actually show it to more people. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell. We release videos every single day and you'll be notified as soon as those come out. If you want to help us also to spread this message, you can support us at patreon.com slash Jason Everett. That helps us to create these videos and show them to the whole world. God bless.